Uh, what's up guys, Peruvian's Finest here, and I'm previewing uh, the newest uh, Thunder Dragon deck. Uh, this is post uh, Chaos Impact. Uh, I play a couple of the new cards that came out in the set, and I changed up the build a bit. Uh, now I decide to play Blind Second. I just feel like with the new cards, uh, this deck can pretty much break boards and then set up your own board. Uh, going second, uh, this deck can still go first. It's just that I'm feeling with the new cards that I added, uh, it kind of you know suits you know trying to break bro trying to break boards. So yeah, uh, I tr well there are some cards that I tried here that, for example, I'll show uh, that kind of you know would probably suit better going first. Uh, cause there's now access. There's a way that you can now make like uh, for example the. Uh, card that can search Nibiru, the, what is it called, the Gallant, uh, you can actually make it, because this deck actually runs a rank 4 engine, uh, but again, uh, a lot of your summons are to your 5th summon, so that's something that is pretty bad, you lose to Nibiru, so, uh, yeah, I'll get into the deck list and then see if you guys uh, see anything that you might change, or you know, I find something interesting so uh, let's start off things i play three thunder dragon original uh three drun thunder dragon dark see cool uh three thunder dragon roar uh three hawk uh three matrix and double duo uh, again this ratio is unchanged um i still run the same three of's except for the duo um and then, then i run uh three solar and three of the new card called the uh, Luna the Dark Spirit. Uh, so for those that you don't know what this card does, is um, it cannot be normal summoner set, and you can banish a dark monster from your grave to special summon it from your hand. Uh, its effect uh, does not activate, so it's an inherent summon. And it's not once per turn, so you're able to, you know, uh, summon it. It comes well with Solar too, because Solar and this uh, gets you four monsters instantaneously, and then from there you're able to make like uh, Apollosa if you make the token into a Link Rebo, or just make uh, any type of board you want, right? Basically, and that's four monsters. Or again, this and so and this and Hawk also, you know, equals uh, the same board. Uh, but yeah, um, this is like ridiculous addition to the deck. Uh, I feel like you can also play this going first and then find combos there, but a lot of the time with this card is getting your summon count way too high without making up a first. So, yeah, again, if Nibiru was in the card, uh, this deck would be so explosive. Like, this would deck, this would turn like combo, obviously, you know. And there would be other combo decks out there that would be better than this, but you know. Luna just offers so much of a... Uh, higher ceiling to the deck, you know, uh, gives it more power. And it's a dark too, so I replaced this with, uh, I was running Shifter. I took it out for these. It's also an alert target because it's dark. And you can't run Shifter with this card because um, with this card, uh, you need a Grave. And Shifter does not allow that, so kind of counterintuitive, so we don't run that. And then for our hand traps, uh, three Phantasme, three Nibiru, and three Impermanence. The way the format has shifted and with the new cards introduced, I feel that Impermanence, Nibiru, and Phantasmia all have their purpose. As you guys saw from the UDS qualifier, or the UDS that happened in Central America, um, Striker was still prevalent alongside with um, Salamigrates and Orcus, all which of these cards uh, really thrive in. So I feel like these nine are very essential. But uh, from what I've seen in the comments below that uh, there's a lot of people, or just in general, I've seen people uh, discuss like, oh, what are some of uh, the uh, uh, choices that, are don't, that don't cost so much money, you know, because Phantasmia is already $115, uh, Impermanences are like $50, $60, depending on what rarity. Uh, for the Phantasmia and Impermanence solution, you can replace them with Ash Blossom. I don't run Ash Blossom. Uh, again, you can run this in this build because... Um, I would not. I would not run Shifter. You're playing Luna, so Ash would be a replacement for like the Phantasmes, and for the Impermanences, uh, you can run well, Effect Veilers. Any card that would do what Impermanence does, it would be a good replacement. 
Uh, probably there's something else I can, can't think of the top of my head, but uh, off the top of my head, those are the cards that I would recommend replacing them with. But I find these cards very high impact. They're uh, the cards that, you know, will defend you against any matchup that you may come across uh, other than, you know, like Rogue or um, uh, the anti-meta matchups like uh, Skuru, Draco, stuff like that. Uh, for the spells, you run Triple Thunder Dragon Fusion. Again, I still like playing three. Uh, it's an easy side out card too, going for second and third. Uh, I don't run Desires anymore, so there is an issue. There is, you can choose to run two, but I still like the three just to have options. You never know. Uh, three Alert Darkness, it's your draw power. Oh my bad, I do run Desires. <laughs> I totally blinked out. I thought I did not run it. Well, but that's possibly another reason why I run three, because you run two Desires. My bad. Uh, three Alert, uh, again, draw power. You need draw power in this deck, and. It ways to see, you know, your cards are is always good. Uh, then you're into desires and a gold sarcophagus. Sark is uh, essential, you know. That's why it's at one and two desires to cycle through your deck. Uh, also, cards to consider. I might consider in the future is running um, Monster Reborn. Uh, it's again a one card summon that is basically anything that it could be anything, uh, especially when you're going second. Especially w with your opponent throws out in a graveyard. Uh, I still wouldn't consider running Instant Fusion, though it's like a fantastic card, actually. I might consider it down the line with this deck because um, it is a perfect going second card. You're able to use a um, uh, Thousand Master Strike to cycle monsters and then, you know, Link Reboot away. But the problem is that I found is I was running Super Poly 2 with this deck, but the extra deck space was really tight. And with this diffusion, you have to dedicate two spots to your uh, extra deck, which can be very tough to find. So, again, I might consider it, but as for right now, I don't feel the necessary to include a uh, diffusion. So, with the extra deck, uh, so three Titan and three Thunder Dragon Colossus. Uh, again, this is the bread and butter, bread and butter of the deck. You need all of these to play the game, basically. Uh, Titan to pop your opponent's cards, Colossus to lock out your opponent from searching and whatnot. Uh, it's one of the uh, standalone cards that make this deck, you know what it is. Uh, I can't say much about that. And then for your links, you play one Link Karibo. Uh, still need it for uh, uh, Egg. And then your token you get off Solar because it's a level 1. You can link it away and then at that point you can make Apollosa. Uh, for the Link 2s, you play the Sun Summon Summoner. Still need it. Uh, it's the way you can make your very... Uh, uh, your boards that include like Colossus, Colossus Titan. It gets you there. Uh, you find one Phoenix and one Mascarina. Uh, Phoenix, Generic, and then Mascarina is a new inclusion with the new set. Uh, Mascarina, what she, was, what she allows you to do is that you make... Um, there are some instances where you'll make Mascarina... And then you'll make a Titan or Colossus. And it'll be your fourth summon, right? So at that point, your opponent has a Nibiru yet. And then you're able to, you know, uh, interact during your opponent's turn. Say if they were able to out, like, the Titan or whatnot. Um, you're able to leak Masquerina and the Titan off for uh, either a Phoenix or a Unicorn. And these are able to trigger during your opponent's turn. Because when they're Link Summon, they get the effect. This one's allowed you to spin back any uh, card on the field, and this one lets you destroy any face down, uh, any stone trap. So it's a cool interaction. Uh, one BLS, it's still in here because uh, salads really don't have an out to it apart from the Pyro Phoenix, which might be strong enough to take it over or beat over it. Uh, but apart from that, uh, it's a card that could easily be taken out as well. Uh, with that in mind, uh, you can probably run a Lambda if you decide to run. Um, uh, Cypher and Gamma. Um, and you play uh, Apollosa and Borload. Um, uh, if you can't afford the Apollosa, another card I recommend would be playing Boral Sword. Since you're playing Go Second, uh, Boral Sword would be an easy way to steal games. But uh, I like. Oh, you know, with like Boral Sword, you play into a lot of uh, Nibiru. Where I still play the Borlo Dragon because. Um, uh, again, if you're able to stick up Peloza and it sticks next turn, you're able to follow up with a Borlo Dragon right here. And then you're just able to, like, just do so much. So, uh, again, Apollos is, like, the safe card that 
uh, doesn't lose, make you lose to Nibiru, and then again, it's very strong against Orcus and Salamigrates, so it's not bad. And then you play Wendy and Grisu, it still has its applications, since now I played uh, my control on the side. So you're able to steal um, links of the Orcists, and you're able to make the Ingrisu off of it. If not, you just, uh, in the mirror, you're able to overlay a uh, duo and Colossus or double Colossus into uh, the Ingrisu, and then you're able to clear boards that way. So it's very cool. And for the side deck, uh, you play Triple Lancia. Uh, it has applications in the mirror and against uh, Orcists and against other random decks that you might come across of, like Infernoids. It's a very good three of. I uh, can't see a, myself not playing it in this format. Uh, three Twin Twisters, again, against Striker and against Rogue, that you would need a back removal. Perfect. And uh, then you play uh, Double Eradicator, um, again, against Striker and against any other back row decks. And there's a card I play in the side deck now that kind of goes well with synergizes with uh, uh, Eradicator, which I'll show right here. It's the one, one Trap Trick. Uh, what it allows you to do is it banishes a trap card from your deck and it sets one of the same copy from your deck So it's basically a searcher for your traps and it searches eradicator, which is a really good purpose or in the other instance you would uh, play uh, Artifact Sanctum. This is straight from Andres Torres' uh, deck that he played at uh, Dallas? Yeah, at Fort Worth uh, Sanctum is really good because um, in the mirror, especially, they'll make you go first to take advantage of Super Poly and whatnot. And then you can just flip Sanctum during their turn, and then they're locked, and then uh, you're able to, like, play around with the Colossus, pop their um, Super Polys before you go into your, like, your Darks, and then you just kill them. And the one Scythe, yeah. It's not really not bad. And you can side it against anything, like, or, like, you feel comfortable going first, you can side it against any of, like, the, like, Salomon Greats and uh, Vorkists. You just stop them right in the tracks. And then lastly, three mind control. Uh, again, you can cite it in the mirror, and you can cite it in Orcists and Salads. It's very good against across those three matchups. Um, against Salad, you bait out the trap, counter trap, and then their rage, because uh, most are likely they'll run one, and then you take their link, and then they're forced to activate it on the spot. If not, they lose their only link, and then you're able to play that turn. Or against Orcists, uh, if they have like the. Um, Feel spell, you're able to take like their Galatea or like the little Ingrisu that are quick effects, and then they're forced to activate, and then you clear that link, and then you're able to make the Ingrisu clear that Babel or whatever, and then go from there. And against the mirror match, obviously, uh, a lot of the time they're just taking one monster or like Titan, and you're just able to mind control it, and then go from there as well. It's a really good card. Uh, probably just keep this standalone. I wouldn't play a uh, Super Poly. Because, uh, again, the extra deck space is very hard. And I guess real quick to see what you would guys uh, side in and out. Uh, for me, like, you'll probably side in this against the mirror match. Uh, the Lancias and the mind controls. Uh, going second. Um, going first, you probably uh, mess around with, like, uh, probably putting, like, this in. Keeping, like, maybe mind controls in. But then you probably just keep these in going first. Um, <clears throat> then against uh, salad uh, going first, obviously you put in like these. Uh, going second, you'll probably go this way. Put your mind controls. Uh, against orchids going second, you'll probably put in these. Oop, the Lancias and the mind controls. And going first against Orcus, you probably again leave it like that because uh, Sanctum can also summon Lancia, so it's pretty relevant too, especially if you draw multiples. And against any like other rogue, you know, like uh, Draco, Ultra Guys, you have these as a way to uh, it's like this can search that and whatnot, so it's a cool interaction. And yeah, um, also too, what I've noticed too when siding out, I like to side out Desires now a lot with the third copy of Thunder Dragon Fusion as like a flex 3 of spot. Uh, I noticed that Allure, especially when you're not taking out Darks when you're siding out, is very essential now. It was my like, kind of, uh, when I was playing, I would notice that when I was siding out Allure, uh, it's, it's a card that, you know, 
it's a draw two that doesn't like uh, put variance into the equation where you could banish uh, desires and then banish like essential copies, whereas the lure is more safer route. And you still play the dark count to like warrant you like not dead drawing these. So again, this this has been like an easy side out for me. And then depending on the situation, sometimes the bureau won't like be appropriate in a matchup or like uh, impermanences. And yeah, that's the deck profile for going second Thunder Dragons, including with the new cards. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to comment below. Uh, subscribe for more content. I do plan to upload uh, the opening I did for Chaos Impact alongside with some other uh, miscellaneous stuff like for Pokemon and DVS. Uh, I have a Cosmic Eclipse and then a new uh, Dragon Ball set that came out, the Magnetilis, the collection box. So stay tuned for that. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time with another video.